you know, we've we've escaped from the children to uh, yes, know, have a chat about are. the uh, to have a chat about the twin. You know, thank you for taking the time out. Um, I, I guess we should probably start at you know at the start. You know, what was it about this character, you know, Anthony, and this script that made you you want to get involved with it? You know, I, Teresa um, Palmer, uh, who plays Rachel, had um, recommended me for the role, and had actually said to me a couple of months prior that she thought I would be a great fit. Uh, for Anthony, and when I when I started reading it, I actually did immediately understand uh, why she had thought that. I kind of sometimes you read a script, and sometimes you read characters, and you think, oh, I don't, I can't, I can't really see how you know a way into that. But with Anthony, I kind of felt like I uh, could relate to a lot of his characteristics um, uh, very quickly. Um, and I think something that, you know, that the movie, to me, ultimately, listen, the movie's about a lot of things, but ultimately the movie uh, for me is about, um, you know, parents dealing with uh, grief in a very extreme way um, and, in their dif- and in their different ways. Um, and as a parent, it's something, you know, you don't, you don't want to have to imagine or think about going through something like that. Um, but the way in which Anthony deals with his grief and their grief uh, and the way in which he's trying to hold their world together without it completely and utterly disintegrating. Um, uh, you know, it was a, there's, he's got such a huge conflict going on inside him the whole time that as an actor, any character who's got, you know, a secret or a, or a you know, or a big conflict, that's something appealing, you know, it's uh, as much as it's, a, you know, it's a horrible conflict uh, mm. to have. It's something that's uh, the idea of it is exciting to to try and play. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the the film is is about grief, and everybody handles grief in different ways, and that's sort of a, a big, uh, you know, a big plot point in the film is, you know, Rachel has sort of completely broken and fallen apart, whereas Anthony, is it, he he's almost viewed by Rachel as like already having moved on to the next thing mm. you know how or, mm. you know what did what did you make of his coping strategy i think you know what i love about horror and what i've always loved about horror and shakespeare is quite like this as well i'm i have to i'll preface that by saying i'm not actually a massive shakespeare fan but the great thing about shakespeare as well uh that horror does it takes you know stories and just elevates them to hugely fantastical kind of levels and this is actually, you know, a very human situation that Rachel and Anthony find themselves in, um, elevated to uh, an extreme level. And, you know, for me, Anthony is, Anthony's trying to, Anthony's trying to basically do the best that he can in an extremely, you know, uh, without giving anything, you know, an extremely difficult situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe he isn't doing the right thing, but he thinks he's doing the right thing. And he's also, you know, I think he's, it's not as obvious with him, but internally, I think he is clinging on by his fingernails uh, as well. But, um, uh, you know, he's, as, as he said, you know, it's kind of all from a place of love. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, Teresa sort of put you onto this role. You know, you guys have worked together, um, obviously, on the Discovery of Witches. How did that history together sort of help you form this relationship on screen? You know, it was great. I think it, it instantly, uh, there's an instant chemistry there. There's an instant kind of ease. Uh, you're not trying to, you know, um, I had a, I'm, I'm on another job the other day, uh, right now. And my very first scene with my female co-star at eight o'clock in the morning was quite a big kissing scene. And we hadn't done a single bit of acting together at all. That can be, you know, that stuff's pretty awkward. Um, So actually going on to something like this, it's so intense and having that previous relationship was hugely advantageous. It also did, you know, the dynamic though was entirely different because in Discovery of Witches, it was... um, you know, our characters were totally different. It was far lighter. It was, you know, it was always fun. It was always joke. I I felt able to be fun and light and jokey, whereas on this, um, I became far more sort of uh, uh, introverted uh, and quiet and um, uh, affected. I think you know by the by the movie, 
that uh, it was a kind of uh, a relationship on this was very different as to what it had been on Discovery, which is. I mean, she was pregnant while you were making yeah. this film. You, you know, you're I making mean, a film about making a film about you know parental bereavement whilst you know she's literally growing another person inside. I mean, that must have made things yeah. like even more strange for you all. I just, I mean, the job, you see what, you know, the performance I think that Teresa gives is amazing in the film. It's so uh, committed and so emotional and to be, she, Teresa's much, actually, Teresa was brilliant at being able to, in between takes, she kind of switches in and out of it and is able to turn it on more on the take. I actually, normally I'm, on this movie, actually, I found it more difficult to be like that. And the fact that, I don't know how many months she was pregnant, but she was several months pregnant. And there may be moments in the movie, if you know, that you might see, but I don't think if you didn't know, you would see. Uh, the fact that she had, you know, it's such a powerhouse of a, of a performance. And it was so cold there at times. So cold. Um, I I take my hat off to her um, for, you know, for, for doing that. I think it's it makes it all the more impressive. And yeah, and I don't know, I mean, God knows what was going through her mind uh, with that as well. You, you're saying it was cold and you know, she's pregnant. I mean, the, the fact that the location is cold sort of, I guess, helps helps mask the bump in a way, but it also, mm. yeah, I think, totally. I think, it, yeah, I think it also works within, within the piece because there's mm. obviously this disconnect between Rachel and Anthony and it's like they're yeah. both sort of trying to like swaddle themselves in as many layers as possible to sort of get the comfort that they're not getting from, from each other, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, no, absolutely, completely. I think it bleeds into that starkness. Um, and there's a sort of, um, you know, it's almost like they don't quite, they're in this bizarre situation of, you know, they've gone back to Finland to try and piece things together. But, you know, Rachel's obviously goes off on one tangent and Anthony doesn't, Anthony thinks maybe he's doing the best, but actually doesn't quite, doesn't really know what to do. And so he's trying to manage the situation by kind of almost, uh ignoring a lot of what is going on which possibly comes across as cold and uncaring but it's because i guess you know he's kind of he's lost as well as with rachel it's very obvious how lost and how emotional she is whereas with him it's a bit more like you know i think on a daily basis inside it's kind of like i don't know actually i don't really know where this is going to go but I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I have some. I have some friends from Finland, and Finnish is. I mean, it just makes no sense to me at all. No, no, and, no. You know, Anthony has to. You know, has to have some conversations with. You know, with Finnish great <laughs> You know, natives. How how difficult was it to sort of get your head around that dialogue? Yeah, I have to say, at the beginning, I was like, right, listen, how is he fluent? Is he Finnish? Is he? And that's never quite explained, actually. Mm -hmm. And they were also very happy for that to be open ended. But they were like, look, you're not going to have any conversations uh, and finish. There's a bit at the wedding swing scene where you see you hear me very faintly saying thank you and finish to the villagers and thank you and finish is Kitos. But, you know, saying it as a Scottish person, Although I'm, you know, or saying it as an American person in the film is different from how the Finns say it. So even at that, I was quite nervous even saying it. So you can kind of see in the film, I'm like, Kitas, Kitas, Kitas. I just I tried to say it under my breath. But it made me laugh when, um, you know, when the town doctor is explaining things to me in Finnish. And I'm like, mm, yeah, mm hmm, mm hmm, okay. And Rachel's like, what did he say? I'm like, well, cut to. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny because some yeah it's a language that there are some languages like I don't speak Italian I don't speak Spanish but you can still pick some words up and you can understand some of the sense of it and um, Finnish is not like that I would say no definitely like I say I've got friends and oh you're talking to me in English then like their friend from Finland or phone and they instantly switch into Finnish and I'm like I don't know that's 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 not English that's that's not I just can't get no. it in it sounds kind of like, with all due respect to the Finnish language, which, uh, you know, is a great language, to me it sounds like gobbledygook. Yes, exactly. Um, now, another another film that you did recently, another genre film, Martyrs Lane, um, mm. also um, is also on Shudder and available to watch. And again, it features children in, mm. in the central role. You know, what mm. do you think it is about horror and children that 
work so well together? I think there's, um, you know, as, as adults, we love to um, put, I mean, look, for a start, there's, there's just something weirdly sometimes about kids on camera. For some reason, they just sometimes look creepy and they sometimes look eerie. I don't know why that is. Tristan's like that in the twin. Tristan's such a beautiful and lovely and cute little kid in real life. You turn the camera onto him and he looks demonic. Yeah. You know, and it's so, so good. So there's something about that that sometimes kids naturally bring. But I think also as adults, you know, um, we there's an idea, isn't there, that when you're a child, sometimes children can see dead people or children can see ghosts or children are connected to a realm that you stop being connected to in adulthood. And so uh, I think when you put any of that idea into a film, it's it kind of taps into, um, you know, uh, long held ideas that we have about children. I remember my daughter actually about five or six months ago telling me that she could see we were on the tube in London and she told me there was a man across from us and there was no one there. And I was like, what? And she said, there's a man over there. And I said, where? I, I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, and she started describing what he looked like. And I instantly got freaked out. Yeah. Because I was like, uh, it's because, because they're so innocent and they just say these things. You're like, well, why would you, you're, you're only four years old. Why would you make something like that up? Um, and so I think, um, and if in any way, if you're a fan of the horror genre as well, which I am, I love the idea of the paranormal or the supernatural. I'm very open to that, anything being real. Um, so I think kids are a great device to, to tap into all of that stuff. And also there's something about children that we lose as adults. There's a kind of lack of self-consciousness about them, um, you know, which in the horror genre sometimes can just be put to really fantastic use. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm with you with kids saying creepy things, I mean, my daughter often tells me about the people in her bedroom at night. And I'm like, what people? I'm never going yeah. to check on them again. <laughs> That's No, you know. I know. And it's especially when they say it at night time. It's like, uh <laughs> Exactly. Um, but now sort of sort of moving moving on slightly, uh, in 2018 you wrote, produced, and starred in Jason Mazza's short The Little Princess. Mm -hmm. Is writing an area that you'd like to develop more into? Yeah, I've I've actually that's the first thing I've ever uh written and then like taken to completion of, of making. Um, but I had written, I've written pilot scripts uh, for things before, actually more comedy stuff, funnily enough. And uh, one of them had been in development for a while, but I think that's just a par for the court. You know, things take so long uh, to, to get made. And with that one in particular, I just, because I'm a little bit like, um, I do love writing, but acting is kind of my first and foremost passion, I guess. So whenever a job then comes up, my attract, uh, my attention gets taken away. I'm not great at being, I've got friends, I've got, um, you know, uh, I've got some good friends who are, you know, writer actors or writer actor directors, and they're really kind of polymaths, I guess, and they're able to just switch their attention. I'm just not, uh, I'm not as good at doing that, but, I do have, I've got, an, I've got ideas that I would love to sit down um, and start writing again. I'm just a little bit, I'm just a little bit lazy sometimes when it comes to writing, is the truth, I think. And you've got a kid, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to get time yeah. to yourself. Look, it is, it is, but I, I think it's the kind of thing that if you want to do, you'll make it happen because there's, there's always time. And I have to say, when I made The Little Princess, and The Little Princess ended up having a, this whole life of its own afterwards, which was never intended, you know, several mental health charities adopted it and started using it as a, as a tool or a, a device yeah. um, to, um, to raise a conversation about mental health. And I was in America last year um, and somebody was telling me that they still use it in a group that they work in. And that kind of, you know, that's very um, affecting to hear that it's had some sort of a, you know, positive effect on from there. So, um, and there was a kind of like personal touch to that story as well. So I think if you write something and then it affects people in any way, um, it's nice. Yeah, definitely. Now you got your, your big break appearing in Cabaret on the West End, you know, are you hoping that a, a musical might come along your desk at some point? Do you know, I have to, I would love to, 
I, I would absolutely love to do I've done two musicals in my life. I did Cabaret and I did Company. And my first love and the reason I got into acting uh, was musicals. There's a bit of me that when Cabaret came along when I was 27, I was working in restaurants. Uh, I had been out of drama school for six years and my career was going nowhere very fast. Um, so Cabaret came completely and utterly out of the blue and it kind of ticked. Like my dream when I was a kid was to play a lead in a West End musical. And so getting to do that really, um, you know, ticked that box for me. Uh, kind of where I'm at in my life and where I'm at in my career now, doing a year long run in a musical isn't as appealing now. And that's, it. you know, musicals normally are such a long run. And also I'm, Cabaret was perfect for me because I can sing, but I'm not like, um, you know, I'm not like the sort of singer that would do Le Mis or, or Miss Saigon or something. So if it was a musical that uh, required, you know, somebody that can sing, but someone that can act, that would be uh, ideal. But uh, I, I haven't, I, I haven't, certainly no, nobody's come to me with any offers for a while. So uh, we'll okay. see. Get it out there now, you know, if, if Tom Cruise can sing his way through the Rock of Ages film, then, you know, it's hope for everybody. Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely. But there's no bigger, I think, there's no bigger buzz, and there's I also there's nothing scarier, I think, than than singing live on stage. Um, it still to this day terrifies me, but I love it as well. And I guess as a, as our time draws to a close, um, where can where can people see you next? You know, what's what's next after the twin? Uh, so I'm filming a TV series right now um, called The Diplomat. Um, uh, out in Barcelona and uh, that's going to be it's got a fantastic cast there's an amazing Spanish actress called Laia Costa um, who's you know done some really cool independent films Sophie Rundle who's in Peaky Blinders and Gentleman Jack uh, and that's going to be on the, I think it's going to probably be on hundreds of channels but in Britain it's going to start off on the Alibi channel and um, it's for World Productions who do Line of Duty, Bodyguard Vigil. Um, so hopefully, you know, they've got a great track record and it's a, it's a cool premise, I think, as well. And Barcelona is a very cool city. Mm. Um, so, um, and then I'm doing another movie later on this year, but I'm not allowed to, I was asked, I'm not allowed to say anything about that yet. So, cool. So well, I look there was almost to, no uh, point. There was almost no point in saying that at all, actually. <laughs> well, no, because it, you know, it, you know, it means that we can all we can all keep our ears out, and you know, and yeah, yeah. To what, yeah. you know what this mystery project is. And uh, yeah. so I, I look forward to finding out what that is, and uh, to seeing the diplomat. And I wish you um very uh, you know best of luck with the rest of the shoot, and best of luck with uh, the twin. I think you know horror fans are gonna gonna really like this. I hope so. I hope so. Thanks, Kat.